Hey everyone, so today I'm going to talk about the Sprout 100 and this will probably be my last video on entry level amps for a while. Now for those of you who don't follow me, I recently decided to give entry level amps a try and to know if the Sprout 100 is good or not, I've gotten my hands on about 10 integrated amps. Now after all, if I have nothing to compare to, how can I say that the Sprout 100 is good for under $1,000 Canadian? Now for AB tests, I got my hands on Diota VX uh, S83, the Toe IN30, the Micro Mega IA60, the Yamaha R300, the Cambridge 651A, Arcam Solo, the YBA WA202, and the Audio Refinement Alpha. Now the YBA and Audio Refinement are more expensive, and the rest are about the same price and a bit lower. Now on top of the listed amps uh, that I just mentioned, I also in my past did try other uh, integrated amps such as the Yamaha AS-A01, the Onyx RA-125, and so forth. And of course, I've tried many higher-end integrated amps uh, such as the Hego 300, the Paphos Logos, the Vector i6.2, the Moon 340, and so forth. So I do have quite a bit of experience to draw from to see to say that is the Sprout 100 good or not. Now. I'm not going to review the unit because everyone in the grandmother has already reviewed it. If you want to know how it sounds, just go watch Sean's video at Zero Fidelity and uh, Ron's video at New Record Day. They explained it very well, the strength, the weaknesses, as well as how it sounds. No point in me uh, repeating it. So I spent probably the most time with the Sprout 100 out of all the entry level integrated amp because I was trying to find something new to say. And after listening to it for almost a month, probably almost every day, I got nothing new to add. And yeah, I got nothing. But still, you know, let's talk about it, right? I spent so much time listening to it. After all, one of your questions probably is, should I buy it? What do I think about it? And oh, by the way, guys, I bet some of your owners did not know that it has a magnetic remote control. Anyway, one of the reasons I wanted to try the Sprout is because I'm a big fan of Paul McGowan. Now it's my daily must watch YouTube channel. Uh, from his video, I can see his company is really focused on delivering the best possible sound they can for the price. So I had high expectations for the Sprout 100, probably even a bit unrealistic. Anyway, now one thing Paul talks about is that the soundstage should be behind the speaker. That way the speakers disappear easier. Well. Uh, the two PS Audio product I've tried so far, the PS Audio Sprout 100 and the PS Audio Perfect Wave DAC, actually does help creating a soundstage behind the speaker. Yeah, well done. So I get a lot of emails from viewers asking me, what amp should they buy? I actually did recommend the Sprout 100 to some of them since it had a lot of good reviews and most importantly, a good return policy. So if you don't like it, just send it back. However, at one point I said, you know, maybe I should give it a try if I'm if I keep recommending the Sprout 100. Well, I would start by saying that the unit does sound very good. Now, when I say it sounds good, I mean putting the price aside, I do enjoy listening to it. You know, in fact, I would choose the Sprout 100 over some of my more expensive integrated amps because it's more to my taste. For me, the way to voice this unit is what today's people mostly want. Most people I meet, especially beginners, want that clear top end and punchy bass. Yep, yeah? so this unit has it. It even has bass boots, so clearly they know who they're targeting. I actually like using bass boots when playing music from YouTube. Now, YouTube clips are usually thin sounding, so the bass boots really helps. Now, the Sprout 100 has what I call the new modern analytical sound, but not to the point that it is clinical sounding. It has decent instrument separation, dark enough background, and very clear vocals. Good bass control, and I never felt the lack of power. Now, to further elaborate on why I say it sounds good, it's because if you compare it to other integrated amps in its class, although it's not the best at everything, it is best at a combination of things. For example, now the IOTA VX SA3 might be more holographic, but it does not have the bass power as the Sprout 100. The Atoll IN30 might be smoother on the top end, but it does not have the soundstage space depth of the Sprout 100. So for me, there's no clear winner. 
when you are comparing integrated amps in this price bracket. Which one works for you depends on your taste and priority. Now, if you think about it, $599 US to have everything in a small box like this, how can you not say it's good value? Right? Bluetooth, a DAC, subwoofer out, blah, 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 blah. I mean, it is for sure good value. Now, some might argue that why don't you get a DAC with Bluetooth on Amazon for like 200-ish, get a Crown Power Amp, actually, which I had before, for 300-ish, get a shit phono stage for about 100-ish, and it will be more powerful combination than this Sprout 100. That's something to think about, right? One thing I noticed playing with all kind of gear over the year is that it all depends on what is your priority. If your priority is to have power because you want to blast the volume or more oomph in the bass, sure, a crown with two, 300 watt would definitely give you an edge. But the problem is that you don't know if those combo would give you a proper 3D soundstage, for example, let alone the size of those combo. Do those systems sound as refined or is it just brute force? Until you try, you don't know. Now, what I do know is when I switch between all these systems I try, all these integrated amps I try, I notice that some of them cannot do a 3D soundstage with depth. If you never get a chance to A-B test, it's hard to tell. If you just go by specs on the internet, you can never tell. Take my Pioneer Home Theater with receiver, for example. Now, I never find it not smooth until I do an A-B test. Now, my nephew who knows nothing about stereo, you know, was able to pick it up just like that when I do an A-B test. He was surprised at how smooth my stereo system sounded compared to my home theater system. Now, I never felt the soundstage on my home theater system sound flat when running in stereo mode until I do an A-B test. So if you're judging the sprout by just looking at specs, I can tell you, you're not getting the full picture. So what I like about the sprout most is that it has a soundstage that is very spacious. Also, other things you'll notice when you do A-B tests uh, is that the Sprout is more dynamic compared to other more entry-level gear. It's like comparing a, a river to an ocean. One is flat and boring, and the other one is extremely lively. Now, as I mentioned before, you will never think like that if you just look at specs and until you do an A-B test. Now, of course, every equipment has areas of opportunity and the Sprout can sound a bit hi-fi. Maybe it's the Class D amp, so I find it lean sounding. It's not a warm sounding amp. The issue with that is that if you pair it with a forward sounding speaker and you start pushing the volume, it might be a bit fatiguing. Now, the Sprout 100 is not bright sounding, okay? You see, I am listening to it in a fully treated room, so every speaker I try with it sounds good and not bright as long as I don't go crazy with the volume. But due to the lean sounding nature of the unit, I recognize that it can be bright in certain rooms with certain speakers at certain volume. Now, I tried to sprout with the Kef LS50, the Klipsch RP600M, the Wafdel D225, the Elac Debut 6.2, the Harp FP3 ESR, and even my vintage Kef 104-2. Now, usually the rule is that you pair a lean sounding amp with a warm sounding speaker. In this case, strangely, I prefer it with the Kef LS50, the Harp FP3, P3 ESR and the Klipsch RP600M the most. I always say in the stereo world, one plus one does not always equal to two. Until you actually plug it in and try, you never know. And it's always a question of taste. And this combo is a bit weird because it could be my room, right? In a fully treated room, it simply worked better for me with these more forward sounding speakers. Now, I Personally, I'm a big fan of Class D since I have a few gear with Class D amp uh, myself. Now, for those of you who don't have experience with good Class D, you are missing out. Forget about all those AV receivers, okay? Those sound like crap. Today, Class D has come to the point where if you play a Class D system and don't tell me it's Class D, I don't think I can tell if it is Class AB or Class D. Now, if you tell me it's Class D, then I will recognize all the Class D characteristics of that system. Now, even my friend's Jeff Rowland's $50,000 Class D amp, I can still hear the characteristic of uh, Class D amp, but I can tell you it sounds amazing. So my point, and I know some of you have brought it up to my attention that you will write it off because it's Class D, don't. Now, strangely, okay, now the fact that it is lean sounding, some might use the term, well, we should have more meat on the bone, 
It's actually part of the reason why I like the unit. You see, because the unit is lean sounding, the soundstage is actually very spacious. I said in the past, right? When I look at how a system sounds, I think of it like a spider graph. Okay. For example, if your system does not have enough bass, the system will sound very clear. If your system has too much bass, instrument separation will be affected and so forth. So the fact that it is lean sounding is good for soundstage. Vocal clarity is good and instrument separation helps also. So for me, its weakness is also its strength. Now, it is important to keep in mind it is 599. It, it is a 599 unit, right? So it will not outperform unit twice its price. Like the shit system I have here, which is about three times its price, the Sprout will not outperform it. Also, you have to keep your expectation in check. If you buy it and you, for example, find instrument separation is not good enough, then you should look for something in a different price bracket. Because if you keep looking for gears in this price bracket, you will not find it better overall. Now, I say overall because if you can find a system that has better instrument separation, that system might not have the speed of this system, for example. Even if it's better at instrument separation, it will be just marginally better and not significantly better. If you think of it that way, you can, you can be confident that you're getting good value for $599. The value is not in question, rather it is to your taste or not. So recently a friend of mine dropped by. And to give you an idea what kind of gear he plays with, the stylus on his turntable MRSP is like 9,000 US. So even for him, although he didn't notice all the area of opportunities I just mentioned, he still find the Sprout sounding good. Enough for him to say, maybe he should get one for his Kev LS50 so he can listen to it when he's using his computer. I think he was a bit surprised how this little unit, like this little small thing performed. Probably like Z's uh, room at the RMAF show this year. Uh, so for those of you who don't know about that room, Z is a YouTuber and he brought his entry-level gear to demonstrate at the audio show. So from what I gather, people were shocked at how good entry-level gear can sound. People were guessing the gears in that room were like costing in the thousands instead of in the hundreds. So I bet you many audiophiles who only play with higher end gear were surprised just like my friend here with the Sprout 100. Now I did caution him that in my fully treated room, any gear I use tend to get elevated to the next level. Next, I also lend it to my friend who owns the Focal Canter. And he thought, he also thought it was a great unit for the price. Sure, he doesn't use it for critical listening, but for the price, he was just shocked, you know, like what today's budget gear can do. So let me end the video at this point. Now with the Sprout, I got to hear feedback from my viewers regarding the experience with, uh, with it even before I made this video. So people message me or email me their experience. Now, one thing I noticed that they all agreed on is that it sounds very good for the price. All of them agreed on it. What I also noticed is that many of them eventually upgraded to something significantly more expensive. Not like double the price, I mean significantly more expensive. You see, the Spro, for me, will give you a taste of what modern high-end audiophile gear is all about. Like speed, detail, good instrument separations, vocal clarity, holographic soundstage, decent dynamics, ease of use, uh, using Bluetooth and so forth. You get a taste of it with the Sprout 100. Now, after you experience it, you have the urge to see what's out there. Now, think of the Sprout as a steak. Now, before the Sprout, you only have eaten hamburger patty all your life. Now, once you try a decent steak, you will want to try a good steak. You will want to try filet mignon, Kobe beef, and so forth. So, for all the reasons I mentioned in this video, I think the Sprout 100 is worth your time, right? Think about it. Come on, if you buy it, you don't like it, just send it back. But I would say, yeah, I think most of you will be quite happy with it. And as I mentioned, most of you might end up wanting to upgrade because once you get a taste of high-end audio, what it can do, you'll want to, to, to get something better. So, uh, all right, so I will see you next time. So, viewer question. Uh, can you improve the sound of this unit if you already have it? So I got a request by a viewer to try to shit Freya with the Sprout 100. You see, I made a video on shit Freya and I was like praising what it can do with, with the soundstage 
you know, with tubes you can create this amazing holographic soundstage. Now, I tried plugging in the Shed Freya uh, running in tube mode, hoping to enhance the soundstage of this uh, Sprout 100. It did change the sound to a more fuller sound, but it did not help with the soundstage significantly. So if you're thinking of, get, of getting a Freya to try with this uh, Sprout 100, forget it. it. It's not worth spending that kind of money. Now, I also did try to plug it uh, to my Bell Counter 1000 monoblock. And yeah, sure, it made the sound smoother. But as I mentioned uh, just now, like the spider graph, it changes the sound stage. So it actually was less holographic with the uh, bel canto. And I guess, you know, bel canto, I usually pair it with a tube preamp to, to, to get that holographic sound stage. There was improvement, but it was not a quantum leap, right? If you want to get more details, yes, uh, you can use a better DAC. I plug in a very high-end DAC to the Sprout 100 just to see. And sure, there's marginal improvement. And this actually got me thinking, though, right? Uh, we're talking about the value of the Sprout 100, right? Think of it this way. You can actually go and buy a power amp first. Plug it to the PS Audio 100 and you can use it for a while, right? And when you save up enough money, you can go buy um, a preamp and then you can just run the Sprout 100 as a DAC. After that, you can go buy a DAC and then you can sell the uh, Sprout 100. And given the fact that PS Audio has made a name for themselves, the resale value on this is actually, it should be pretty good on the used market. So even if you use it for maybe two years, you might just lose 200 bucks on it. And that's like less than a quarter a day. So if you think like that, if you want to buy a Sprout for long-term use or even with the intent to upgrade later on, I mean, it's still a good buy no matter how you think of it. So just one final thought after spending time with all these budget integrated M, and that's bass. At 50 watts, one thing I notice is that bass is very limited in terms of power oomph digging deep, and so forth. Now, I know some of you might think, no, you just need an efficient speaker. And from my experience, it's more than that. And I say that because I'm able to A-B test against uh, different amps. So against the Vider, which is 100 watts at 8 ohms, as opposed to all these integrated amps at 50 watts at 8 ohms, I noticed there is a significant difference in terms of punch, in terms of power. And... One of the best examples I can think of is with the Klipsch RP600M. Yeah, it's about 90, what, 96, 98 dB. So everybody probably thinks that you don't need a powerful amp to drive it. And my experience tells me otherwise. And I will cover it when I talk about that speaker in the future, when it comes to bass specifically. Now, I didn't want to put this as a caviar for the Sprout 100 because, you know, it's just not unique to the Sprout 100. Yes, it has bass boost, the Sprout 100. But when you compare it to, let's say, a Vidar, you will see that it's more organic. It's more effortless, natural. It does nothing uh, sound like it's forced out of the unit. So this is something very important to consider when you're shopping for integrated amps in this price range with this kind of power. And I think for most people, it is adequate. It is good enough. Um, but I do want to highlight it because that's something that I noticed, uh, you know, playing with all these gear. All right, guys. So till next time.